Good morning, everyone, or almost afternoon. Uh, thanks for joining me here. Uh, we are going to wait just a couple more minutes while we let more people roll in. But if you are here for the beautiful Burrowing Owls um, webinar chat, you are in the right place. This is a webinar format, so you can see me and hopefully you can see my screen with the beautiful Burrowing Owl on it, um, but I cannot see you or hear you. If you do have any questions or comments throughout this presentation, feel free to put them in in the Q&A box. Um, usually at the top or the very bottom of your screen, there should be a few different icons, and one of them is a Q&A feature. You can click on it and type in any questions or comments that you have throughout the presentation. Um, I'll probably go through the whole thing and then do questions at the very end, but feel free to add your questions in as we go. Like, Hope everyone's having a good Friday so far. Excited for the weekend. Uh, and I wanted to thank you for spending your lunch break or your early afternoon here with me talking about burrowing owls. They're such a cool little animal. Um, and hopefully by the end of today, you will know where you can go to see them and what you can do to help protect these little beauties because they're so cute. Oh my goodness. I personally have yet to uh, see one in person but I'm hoping that one day it'll come soon. And last logistics before we get started, this is going to be recorded uh, and posted on our YouTube channel in probably about a week or so. So if you'd like to rewatch this or send it to someone, uh, feel free to check back on our YouTube page uh, in about a week and it should be uploaded. Nice. So without further ado, let's get started. My name is Michelle Garcia, and I'm the Educational Program Coordinator at the Open Space Authority. Uh, this year is our 30th anniversary, which is very exciting. We've got 30 years of protecting water, wildlife, and working lands, and it's almost the end of our 30th year anniversary, uh, which is sad, but we've got a lot more fun stuff uh, going on uh, coming next year in 2024. Uh, this is a part of a regular virtual programming we have going on the first Friday of every month um, around noon. We do about like 30 minutes to an hour of a virtual program. Uh, that way people from far and wide can join in. This will be recorded and posted on our YouTube page later on. Uh, so if you just type in Santa Clara Valley Open Space Authority into YouTube, you should be able to find this in about a week. Yeah, so let's dive into some burrowing owls. I'm going to hide my video because watching myself talk is always really distracting. My video panel. And once again, if you have any questions as we uh, are going through this presentation and through this little chat, feel free to put it in the Q&A box. Um, I'm going to answer all questions at the very end, and we should have time to answer and go through questions. Yeah, here we go. Uh, before we dive in, I would love to acknowledge that the Open Space Authority works within the lands that were originally stewarded by the Awazwaz, Chochenyo, Mutsun, and Tamian speaking peoples. Today, we are honored to partner with the Ama Mutsun Tribal Band and the Mwekama Ohlone Tribe of the San Francisco Bay Area in our shared work to protect and restore the environment and connect people to land. Um, as we go through this talk, um, for context, we are talking about like the South Bay, what is now known as like like San Jose to Morgan Hill area. Um, that's gonna be the majority of the owl populations that I'll be talking about and the habitat that we're talking on. And those are the ancestral lands of these tribes. Um, we work with these two groups pretty closely to help protect the area. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, owl populations in the past versus now. And hopefully you'll clearly see that, um, you know, there is a lot of shared work that needs to be done. And so I want to thank you for being here and for learning a little bit more about a really special species. Uh, if you are interested in learning more about the Amamutsun Tribal Band or the Muwekma Ohlone Tribe of the San Francisco Bay Area, um, their websites are listed on here. You can go check out amamutsun.org or muwekma.org. Um, there's tons of resources on there and they also have cool events going on. Check them out. So why we are here today, we're talking about burrowing owls. And today I'm gonna ask and answer the question, 
what are burrowing owls and what makes them so beautiful? Um, although I guess beautiful might not be the first word I used to describe them, but oh my goodness, they are adorable. They're such like a cheeky little characters and they're super charismatic and almost seem very expressive. Um, but they also have a lot of really unique qualities that make them extra special, especially here in like the South Bay area. Um, they are not very often seen by many people. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that that we'll get into kind of towards the end. But let's dive in. What is so beautiful about these little burrowing owls? So there's a lot of different types in of owls in the Bay Area, but the burrowing owl holds a special place among the different owl species. Today we're going to talk about what makes the burrowing owl so special, its unique characteristics, where you can see them, and most importantly, how it can all work together to protect these little babies. I mean, look at that face. Oh my goodness. So there's a bunch of different owl species that you can find um, in throughout California, throughout North America, and specifically in the Bay Area. We have great horned owls, which is what is pictured on the very far left. This largest photo is a photo of the great horned owl. It's named after those, um, those interesting feather structures on the top of their head. They look like horns, but they're really just feathers. Burrowing owls are huge. They have like a very large wingspan. Seeing them fly at night is kind of intimidating. Um, it feels like they could pick me up, which is crazy. Uh, but they're a fierce predator. Um, uh, featured at the very top of this slide is a western screech owl. Um, it's a little bit more deranged looking and a bit smaller, still a little bit bigger than a burrowing owl. Um, but it's known for making some like kind of crazy noises. Where is, whereas the uh, the great horned owl makes that iconic hoot noise. And of course, down below is the barn owl, the classic barn owl. We also have uh, pygmy owls and sawi owls and all kinds of things. And all of these owls say, um, share some a lot of similar features. They're all nocturnal. They're all, for the most part, solitary animals. Uh, they nest in trees up high. They are amazing flyers. They're very quiet um, and very skilled and fierce predators. Um, owls are notorious for not being picky. They are opportunistic, which the burrowing owl is pretty opportunistic. But I would argue that the burrowing owl um, breaks a lot of the like stereotypes that we know about owls, including being this like really like fierce and successful predator. Um, so all of these you can picture flying at night, you know, with the moon in the background, uh, cats and rats and squirrels are fleeing everywhere. Even other birds are afraid of some of these owl species. Uh, whereas the burrowing owl is quite different, although it is a type of owl and does share a lot of the like biological features, like it has those fixed eyes and it has a lot of the same hearing features and hearing designs that most owls have. Um, its habits and its means of surviving are very different. So some of the ways that burrowing owls are unique. These three photos featured here are all of burrowing owls. They have this very iconic look. Um, they have this, you know, that little tiny round head. They're about maybe at maximum nine inches tall. They've got these long skinny legs that shoot out. Um, and they're that really beautiful, iconic brown and white speckled pattern in their feathers. Unique traits of burrowing owls are that, as you might have guessed from the name, they burrow. They mostly live underground. They do not frequently live in high trees, and they certainly do not nest there. Another thing is that burrowing owls are largely crepuscular animals, and often people actually call them diurnal animals, which we'll talk a little bit more about what that means, but basically, you're going to see them around during the day, not at night, unlike all of those other owl species. And lastly, these are not mainly flight predators. They are ground predators. They stick to the ground. They're just scurrying about on their little tiny legs. Uh, so let's kind of dig in and go point by point to learn more about these unique traits of these burrowing owls. Um, one thing I would like to point out is in the photo in the very far right hand side, you see a little burrowing owl with a monarch butterfly. Put that back. I just thought that was a, a cute 
photo, but also kind of sad. Um, like I said, most owls are opportunistic and the burrowing owl is certainly also an opportunistic predator, but it has to be a little bit um, more careful with the prey that it goes for. So let's dive in first to the burrows. So like I said, burrowing owls, as their name implies, they burrow or they live largely underground. They certainly nest underground. Um, <laughs> you see in this photo, we've got two burrowing owls um, protecting its bur their burrow. They spend you know a good amount of time underground, but they also like to spend a lot of time just immediately outside of their burrow. They'll often be found napping just outside of the hole of their burrow um, or looking for prey there. They're very kind of curious, quirky little animals. You see one um, looking into the, the camera. It's this is probably a um, like a game camera that someone has stationed out front, and it's taken a bunch of photos. And it's this little owl friend has taken a closer look at what's going on. Uh, so these burrowing owls, you can often find one owl per burrow, or you can also find many different owls in a burrow. Um, here we have an example of a nesting pair. These two are nesting inside this burrow. And soon once their chicks hatch, they could have as many as like 10, 10 little burrowing owls in one burrow. And they are very comfortable living in community. Whereas most owls are for the most part solitary. And of course they also nest and raise their young. But the burrowing owls, um, you can often find them in in large groups, they certainly do not seem afraid of uh, sharing their burrow. Although one um, interesting misconception that a lot of people have, burrow owls don't often dig their own burrows. Um, if you take a, look, a close look in this photo, this is actually a man-made burrow. This is an example of like a plastic tubing that a researcher has probably created for burrowing owls. Uh, that way they can have their own habitat without having to find or dig for natural habitat. Um, when they are not using man-made specific burrows that scientists have created for them, they will nest in construction zones, PVC pipes, drainage ditches, um, or most commonly in nature, they love living in squirrel holes. Um, if you live in the Bay Area, you are probably very familiar with ground squirrels and their ability to dig crazy tunnels um, well, the burrowing owls actually do us a favor in many instances, where come nesting season in the winter time, they will go into squirrel holes and drive out the squirrels and take over their nest for the winter. That way they have a safe place uh, to uh, you know, keep quiet and raise their young during winter time. So they are often taking over holes that are already there in the ground. They don't often dig their own holes. Um, these, as you can see in this photo, this is also a great example of the kind of habitat that burrowing owls love to live in. You'll see this open, flat, um, meadowy grassland. Something I do want to point out, though, is this: there's a lot of like bare dirt on the ground around here, and there's a lot of very short grass. Burrowing owls uh, do not like heavily forested areas or really brushy areas, and they do not like areas with really tall grass. So this is an example of a beautiful burrowing owl habitat, which is probably why um, these scientists decided to uh, create some habitat and create some plastic tubing for these owls. An uh, interesting fact about burrowing owls is they also have a very high carbon dioxide tolerance. Um, this is very common of other burrowing animals like moles, squirrels, um, Burrowing owls have also adapted the ability to tolerate a lot of carbon dioxide, uh, which is good because carbon dioxide uh, tends to accumulate a lot in underground burrows. And so this is another way that they have been able to uh, thrive underground. Another, one last fun thing about burrowing owls burrows is that they tend to decorate, um, which uh, especially around the like winter seasons, like the decorating for the winter holidays. They will collect small shiny things, little pieces of trash um, and stick them at the entrance of the burrow. We're not quite sure why they do this. Um, it might be just to signify that this burrow is occupied and it's occupied by a burrowing owl. And if a squirrel or some other type of, and if some other burrowing owl tries to take it over, which we know that they love to do, they love to take over burrows that aren't theirs, 
Um, they'll know that, you know, there's an owl here and it's going to put up a fight to try to save its burrow. They also like to decorate. Um, they will collect um, other animal species or their own feces and put it at the entrance. Again, we're not 100% sure why we do this, but we do know that collecting um, uh, feces at the very entrance of their burrow attracts a lot of bugs. Uh, and that's going to be their main, one of their main sources of food is those bugs that collect at the very entrance. And it's just an easy, you know, little snack if they're feeling hungry. They just go right outside, find whatever bugs, checking out uh, the poop that they've collected and grab one as a little snack. So they're very smart creatures and they've really adapted very well to life underground, especially considering that these are owls. They're meant to be flying high in the sky through the trees, but these guys have found their own unique niche, which is very cool. So another way that they are unique, like I mentioned, they are crepuscular predators. So crepuscular means that they are most active at sunrise and sunset or dawn and dusk. Most owls are nocturnal. So nocturnal is of course, when an animal is most active at night, they're hunting through the nighttime. But burrowing owls are most active at sunrise and sunset. And even you can see them active in the middle of the day. So although they tend to hunt at sunrise and sunset, they are active. They are diurnal species, which means they are active during the day, like you and I, which is cool because a lot of times, you know, we miss out on cool owl sightings because we're not awake at night. Whereas these owls are out and about during the day. And so it isn't, so it can be kind of easy to actually spot them, although they're pretty skittish. So if you stay, as soon as they see a human, they will uh, flee, but you might get a glimpse of one. So they're um, most active during the day, especially during breeding season, when um, males and females are meeting and they're doing their mating practices and they're looking for nesting sites and they're foraging more to uh, feed the young. They're a lot, very quite active in the breeding season, which is actually right now. Breeding season starts in October um, and ends kind of around March. So this is the time for growing owls, which is very cool. In this photo here, you see, this is actually uh, somewhere in here is supposed to be a male and a female, like a breeding pair and their chicks that are nearly at adulthood slash maybe very well into adulthood. So these guys, they stick around. They are not afraid of hanging out together for long periods of time. Um, as predators, they will often hang out very near the entrance of their burrows, or they will perch up on slightly raised sticks like you see here or rocks uh, and look out over their open grassy uh, habitats to look for food. Like I mentioned earlier, they're very opportunistic predators. So basically anything they can really fit in their mouths, they're going to try to eat. Whether that's grasshoppers, caterpillars, scorpions, butterflies, lizards, small bird eggs, uh, rats, or, or not rats. Rats are about as big as these things. Probably mice or voles is like the biggest predator they really go after, or the biggest animal that they really go after. Um, but yeah, they are not, they're certainly not picky. They're just so small. Um, and we'll talk about their hunting practices in just a little bit, but they really have to stick to things that are just on the ground and pretty easily accessible to them. And lastly, they are great at storing food. Uh, just like a lot of other burrowing animals, they will go out, especially in like thriving food seasons and collect extra food and store it in a special area in their burrows. That way, come wintertime or, you know, the middle of summertime when food is scarce, they have an extra food storage. And uh, researchers have found that these food storages can be quite large. There was, I guess, one that they found that had over 200 uh, mice stored in this food storage area and this was just for a nesting breeding pair uh, so they can store quite a lot of food they are pretty successful predators but again they have to stick to the ground to what things they can actually find so speaking of ground predator so i actually have a little video that i'm going to show you guys in a little bit that shows an example of 
what they're like when they're hunting. But here we have a burrowing owl in mid-flight. It's obviously quite upset. Um, I think maybe this photographer who took this photo maybe might have gotten just a little too close to this burrowing owl and spooked it. They are not very active of flyers. They don't tend to soar uh, or fly long distances unless they're migrating. Um, instead, once they are nesting, they stick to maybe like very short bursts of flight. Um, their wingspan is about um, a foot and a half to two feet long. Um, and they, again, they don't fly very uh, far. Um, instead, when they are looking for prey, like I said, they will kind of perch up on maybe just slightly higher, like a stick that's elevated or a plant or a rock, uh, and survey, survey the field. And then once they see a predator, they'll jump down and kind of waddle as close as they can to it. And if they can, they'll just stay on the ground. Sometimes they'll uh, fly up and then swoop down and just land on top of their prey. Um, the other reason you might see a burrowing owl fly, and this is probably um, a good chance to see them, is for their mating practice. Oftentimes, if a male is trying to win over a female, it'll do this, um, it'll raise itself up and it'll fly up high and it'll kind of like, it'll float there for a little bit and then dive back down and do that over and over again as a part of uh, the mating ritual to win over the female. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen really quick and then reshare it on the proper video slide. Be patient. This, so this, this video that we're about to watch is an example of a burrowing owl actively hunting, which is really cool. Let's say stop sharing. Hello. Share screen. Using videos of burrowing owls. Very cool. All right, here we go. It's just a short video, but and it's not great quality, but it's pretty interesting to see how they hunt. All right, we're going to play that one more time just so we can, because uh, it's pretty quick. Let's just see it one more time. We're going to waddle across the ground really quick. It's running and it stops. And just a quick burst of flight. And I have no idea if it actually got what it was looking for, but it looks confused. So I'm assuming that it was unsuccessful. Very cool. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. You also got to hear a little bit of the burrowing owl sounds. They make a few different sounds, um, but it's a lot of those like quick little chirping noises uh, and very high pitched sounds. Yeah. So we've gone over uh, the burrows of the burrowing owls their um, daytime versus nighttime habits. Um, again, unique among owls, they are awake during the day. They are burrowing underground and not living in or nesting in trees. And um, they are largely looking for prey while they're on the ground. They are not looking high up from above or flying. They are ground predators. Um, but I would argue another very special aspect about burrowing owls, and I think why they deserve so much importance um, is because they are a very threatened species here in California. There are a lot of threats to burrowing owls, um, and we're going to go over a few of the threats and reasons why they um, have become such a special species in California. But these little guys, um, overall, their habitat and their populations have not been doing great.
So burrowing owls are a species of special concern in California. They are not a protected, a federally protected species because there are populations throughout the rest of the United States that are healthy, but specifically in California and specifically in the Bay Area, we have seen a huge drop in the population. Um, as of the 1980s, there were like hundreds of breeding pairs. And now uh, in 2023, we are down to just a handful of breeding pairs uh, in the Bay Area, which is so sad because these little critters are so cute and very important in controlling mice and pests and ground the ground squirrel population. Uh, so some specific uh, things or issues that have damaged these populations of burrowing owls is number one, we'll start on the very far left-hand side, is a photo of very tall grass. Like I mentioned earlier in this presentation, burrowing owls prefer habitat that is open meadow, kind of flat lands with short grass. Um, but for a long time, California has been struggling with the introduction of these invasive grasses that are huge. They are so tall. Um, if you guys have been ever been out hiking in any of the open space authority preserves or around the Bay Area, you'll see this tall grass that is knee high or even like waist high grass and that is not good for burrowing owls if a burrowing owl creates a nesting site and then tall grass overtakes it they will abandon the nest or they will not return the next year which forces them to look elsewhere another of course huge issue for burrowing owls has been uh, the development and urban sprawl um, as we as the bay area continues to grow and more and more people come here and businesses continue to grow, we do stretch out and take over more and more natural areas. And of course, those beautiful flat grasslands are prime spots and very easy to develop, which means that burrowing owls lose even more habitat. And lastly, one um, surprising issue is that more and more, not surprising, of course, more and more people have been looking for ways to get rid of ground squirrels. And of course, um, they in many areas, they're considered a pest. Many homeowners hate the fact that they are destroying their lawns and plants. Um, but with the urge to eradicate ground squirrels and remove them, and with the presence of rodenticide in these ground squirrel populations, this has greatly affected burrowing owls. Because burrowing owls not only depend on you know like infant ground squirrels as food but also depend on ground squirrel holes for habitat and nesting sites and as we get rid of ground squirrels we are slowly getting rid of nesting areas and habitat for burrowing owls so over the years through these three issues which are all so like simple and small issues they have accumulated and gotten worse and worse and worse. And now the ground squirrel population, not the ground squirrel, the ground squirrel population is doing okay. But now the burrowing owl population in the Bay Area has suffered so much. Um, luckily, there are a lot of conservation efforts and scientists working to recover the population. Uh, so like I said, when we were talking about the the burrows of the burrowing owl. Scientists tend, um, scientists are great at working together and protecting areas and the very few remaining habitat that burrowing owls live in. One example is the Talon Ecological Research Group. Um, they've been partnering with the Santa Clara Valley Habitat Agency uh, to help protect the small amount of habitat that burrowing owls have left and creating habitat for them. So going in and creating that plastic PVC piping that they love to nest in. Um, some ways that you can help burrowing owls is that if you do see a burrowing owl, like I mentioned, they are very skittish. Um, if you approach a burrowing owl and it sees you and it's like actively reacting to your presence, you are too close to that burrowing owl. I know that they, you know, are very cute and beautiful animals and we want to take photos of them. We want to see them, but we do not want to try and flush out those burrowing owls. Because again, if they feel threatened in an area and they're near their burrow, they will abandon that nesting site and will be forced to look elsewhere, which expends their resources, expends their calories and puts them at risk for predation of other 
uh, birds, of coyotes, of bobcats. And so if you see a burrowing owl, you want to make sure you are looking through big binoculars from far away to give them their space. Uh, another way you can help protect burrowing owl populations is by donating your time or money. Um, the Golden Gate Audubon Society actually has has and trains doves and programs specifically for burrowing owls, which is very cool. Uh, in a moment, we're going to talk about some parks where there are known burrowing owl habitat, and they have a docent program where you can specifically go on a guided hike with a docent, and from a safe distance away, you can learn about these burrowing owls, learn about the recovery efforts, and actually get to see one with the help of this expert docent, which I think is pretty cool. And always remember um, when you're out there on the trails to respect wildlife, respect people, and respect yourself without in nature. Um, we do, we want to do what we can to protect the sensitive species and make sure that there's more of them around in the future. We don't want to um, harass the last remaining population and then make it so no one else in the future can see them. Uh, we want to protect that population first and take pictures second. So where can we see them? There are a lot of good areas. Like I said, um, we're getting into nesting season. It goes through October through March. So specifically in the Bay Area, we're going to have um, a good amount of burrowing owl activity soon. Um, some popular areas have been East Shore State Park, Shoreline at Mountain View Park, and Cesar Chavez Park. Um, there are docent programs at the Cesar Chavez Park. Um, this photo on the left-hand side is actually a, a photo of a group with their docent. Um, and the docent is pointing out where the burrowing owls are. So any of these parks are have been known to uh, have areas where there's burrowing owls, and you can even join a guided hike with an expert to go and see one for yourself, which I think is really cool. We do have some burrowing owls at some of our preserves at the Open Space Authority, like Coyote Valley or Sierra Vista. It is a bit rarer. There's a lot of human population at our preserves, which tends to, um, you know, scare them away. But it, it's happened in the past, so hopefully sometime soon we can continue to develop and restore this area and maybe have a, a thriving burrowing owl population once again in the years to come. Yeah, that's all I got for today. We are just a couple minutes over time, but if you have any questions that you would like to share, oh, this is a quick, I, I'm going to see if there's any questions first. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in, but this is just um, a quick little video of a researcher um, returning some little chick, some baby burrowing owls back to their um, pre-made burrow. I'll just play that for you guys. And then uh, at, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in, but we'll just play this video. It's pretty cute. Them. They don't know what to do. Oh. While I'm um, researching for this presentation, I found that bur burrowing owl photos are almost just good as um, cat photos on the internet. They're just so expressive and weird. Um, I mean, look at that. It's like a little Muppet. I don't... <laughs> If this, is, if this doesn't make you want to save the burrowing owls, I don't know what will. And that's all. Uh-oh. Okay, we'll stop sharing. All right, last call for any questions. Oh my, what's happening? There we go. Thank you guys so much for coming and for joining me. Again, we've got uh, virtual programs happening on the first Friday of every month. And we also have a ton of other free programming happening. So if you're interested in joining us in the field for a guided hike, feel free to check out our website and check out our event page. 
in this the recording of this video will be posted on our YouTube channel in about a week or so. So yeah, feel free to enjoy. Thank you guys so much. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend or great start to your weekend. Bye everyone.